Today's scrapbook soup is all about unusual pages from printing right on 12 by 12 paper in your printer with Patty Dabowski to an album that's just for postcards. And a special friends layout in a new size to a baby layout with a special element from Stacy Karen. All of today's projects feature special pages in one scrapbook soup. Today's scrapbook soup has been brought to you in part by Spellbinders, dye templates for cutting, embossing, and stenciling. Beautiful details, inspiring creativity. Spellbinderspaperarts.com Stamp, sprinkle, tap, heat, wow. Wowembossingpowder.co.uk Sakura Color Products of America. Sakuraofamerica.com pages are not the same. They can be square or round, large or small, single or double. There is a huge variety of page styles and sizes. And on today's episode, Julie and I will show you just a few different examples. Well, here, for example, I've got an eight and a half by 11. Now, that is not an unusual size, but it was a very common size when we first started scrapbooking in the mid 90s. But, you know, I really like this format and I like the landscape format because I think it's just beautiful for just one photograph. And the thing about the size is that you can reduce it very easily to like a four by six and then this is a three by five and all these little wallet sizes and you don't lose anything like you would if you reduced a 12 by 12. How fun, and I have brought two pages with me. The first one I call my viewfinder layouts. <laughs> <laughs> and I bet you can guess why. Yes, I can. Because I decided to snip it into this wonky circle, and you can see here, this is a layout all about the places that I traveled to in 2009. I took one picture from each place I went, and I just wrote it out, and what a great way to capture an entire year. It looks like you went around the world. <laughs> it feels like I went around the world, too. <laughs> this second layout, well, the thing that's so unusual is look at this huge photo. This is a big old eight and a half by 11 photo. And by most people's standards, they would consider this a terrible photo. This is my husband. And well, that's not much of him that you're catching there. And here I am, eyes half closed, also <laughs> out of the frame. It was a little iPhone photo that I took of the two of us. But I thought, you know, what a great way to actually fill my journaling into the gap between us because it's our love story and it's the thing that is between us, along with all these smaller photos that are from the years, from college until now. Well, that's what scrapbooking is all about, all those special moments. <laughs> Well, up next, Paddy Dabowski is back with a printing technique right on your printed paper. I'm here with Patty Dabowski, the digital scrapbook teacher, and she has a really cool way of printing a photo directly on a piece of scrapbook paper. Patty, how are we going to do this? Well, what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how to use a photo mask with uh, Photoshop Elements. I'm going to open it up, and this is a great way to use traditional papers or you can use digital papers but this is going to show digital or pa traditional pages. I'm going to go to file new blank file. I'm going to create a 12 by 12 document that's 300 pixels uh, per inch RGB color and white and the instructions will all be on the website. And that's because we're working with a piece of 12 by 12 scrapbook paper. Right and I'm using traditional paper here so what's important so I'm going to use this photo mask, but I'm going to actually have to use my ruler on this paper to show, um, to get it in alignment right. What and is a photo mask, Patty? Well, one of my students just recently described it as a black blob, but what it is is kind of a template piece, and I've, I've dragged the um, mask on. As I drag the photo on, 
it'll cover it and then I can do a clipping mask. So layer create clipping mask. And this is the piece of paper that we're going to be printing on, right? right? Mm -hmm. Which has a nice cream colored background because Which I is know important. you told me that it was important. And Very why is important. that? Well, because if we print on a dark colored piece of paper, it's just not going to look right. Like this green piece of paper, which right. I know is a test a piece test for you. Piece, you can right. see that the little girl's yeah. skin is all green. green. She looks like a Martian. Right. Yes, yes, yes. So yes. she behaves like that sometimes. But <laughs> um, yes, cream background. And then I'm just going to manipulate the photo so I get it about how I want so it. So the mask acted like a die cut. And Correct. basically we were able to create the shape of the mask right. with, with our image. With the little stars and all that. And then we can run this paper actually through this printer. And but I have a question first, which is mm -hmm. how do you know where to place the mask on that big sheet of paper? Because how am I going to know where it's going to end up on here? Is it just kind of a guessing game? Well, it could be a guessing game, at which time you'll be using a lot of paper by mistake. <laughs> so to avoid that, what you can do is you can use a regular ruler and just kind of measure how, you know, how far this is from the side, either side. Oh, so like if I wanted it two inches in from Correct. the side, how would I just do so that though on the screen. Right here, you would turn your rulers on first, and mine are on, but to see the rulers, so right you go the to view, view menu. and rulers. And then you just kind of eyeball it up here off of the 10 inch mark mm -hmm. and off of this mark over here. And you just kind of manipulate it. You take measurements all the way around, and then you would get it how you pretty much think you want it. You could print it out on a test piece mm -hmm. of paper like this, or um, you could go ahead and just print it on the Now, could stuff. I make the mask bigger or smaller? Yes, or does it can, have to be that size? Yes, no, you can make it bigger or smaller. So if I had a piece of scrapbook paper that had less room on it, say, than this you one, would I the could mask make it smaller. Bigger. Yes, bigger or smaller, okay. either way. Um, and you notice as I drag the photo around, different parts of it show in the oh. mask. Now, this is a black and white photo, but in the next example, you'll see the difference in a um, in a um, color, color photo. photo, right. Okay, so let's go ahead and print that. Now, so to print it, I'm gonna go up to File and Print, and I'm gonna choose my printer here. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna choose my settings, which I'm going to, um, in this example, it's not that important that I choose borderless, but I'm using a borderless printer. I would choose, in this example, I would use um, plain paper. Okay. okay, and then click OK, and even the glitter on this paper works great through this printer. So that's amazing to me, and I know that you told me that mm -hmm. we're going to turn the paper to the side when we put it through. Correct, because that's the way that it'll come through in the right direction. Excellent, and a good thing to remind yourself of. Now, I yeah. know you say we could put the glitter through the paper, mm -hmm. uh, rather put the glitter paper through the printer, and it doesn't mm -hmm. hurt your printer at all? No, I run these little cleaner sheets through, which um, cleans off the glitter, which that's does so cool. really and Look at how this printed right on here, right over that glitter. Amazing. And it looks like the image came on this paper, which is amazing. But you didn't just stop there, Patty. I know that you added some dimension to this page with some little embellishments. Correct. Right? And this yeah. is a great way to mix up both the paper and the digital together. And this is called hybrid. This ah. is hybrid scrapbooking, the best of both worlds. But really, the only digital part is the mask and the photo. But you can't get that look in regular, traditional scrapbooking. You can't, and it's on here so seamlessly. Mm -hmm. I think it's fantastic. But right. I want to get to that color photo. Okay, so we're gonna <laughs> um, we're gonna go do the same thing. File new, blank file, and we're gonna click OK. And I'm gonna go open up another mask. Let's see, which is right here, and this is a. Um, Color, a color photo, and I'm going to basically do the same thing, but in this example, I'm going to print on regular white scrapbooking paper. I've got my white page here. I'm going to drag on a piece of digital scrapbook paper right there, kind of looks like old and aged. I'm going to drag on another mask, and I'm going to drag on a photo, at which point I can do the same thing, layer, uh, create clipping mask. And there they are, oh, kind of nice, old and focus. faded, yeah. right? And, and that's I like the, the way it fades into the paper, That's what too. the mask does. And then to change it to black and white, I'll have that layer selected, and I'll go to Enhance, Convert to Black and White, and I can kind of click around in here to see which one I like, and then just click OK, and there I've got the black and white photo. And then from here, I've printed it out, depending on what kind of traditional embellishments you want to put on it, you know, whatever you have, um, 
then you can print it out. You can move the mask wherever you want And I you know that you have one here that you have already done up with so many cool this things. This was regular traditional scrapbooking. And if you notice Santa's beard, you can see the um, texture, the paper oh, coming. Oh, the texture came right through yes, there. So, so that's really important to so note the that white, anything underneath. Yes, the white of it is going to be this color here. Okay. So that's kind of extra dimension. Super cool. Now, I know this green piece of paper is a very important thing that hangs in your scrapbook room, so tell me about <laughs> hangs that. Hangs on my bulletin board. Well, because I've printed so many times the wrong way. I, I make a lot of mistakes, but I always learn from them. So I printed that through on a scrap piece of paper, and I keep it up there just to remind me of which way the paper goes through so I get the results that I want to get. I love that you're showing us a way to mix the digital with the traditional because I think at least for me, like I would miss doing at least something right. with scissors and playing with all the dimension of right. embellishment. And there's so many beautiful regular scrapbook papers out there. You, you really oh, want to use them. You make it look so easy it once easy. again. Thank you. Thank you, Julie. And we'll be right back. Well, albums aren't just a place for memories that you use with photos. You can also use postcards. And you have brought gorgeous postcards. I have. There's a lot of memories tied up in those, fo in those postcards. And believe it or not, this album here, uh, I did that in the uh, 50s. Not a lot of supplies. It was just typing paper, and it's held together with staples. So I thought I need something new. So here I have a brand new postcard journal. So let's get started. I'm going to push this forward here for just one second. Now, this is uh, already sized uh, foam board, but what I'm going to do, I'm actually going to split it in half. I don't need that um, So you hole. just already cut it part way and no, we're just finishing. No, it comes like oh, this. Oh, it comes yeah, like Yeah, it that. actually comes like this in a package ah. and it's uh, 9 by 12, it's, so it's a really good size. And But because it is joined, I am going to go down the center again You're with so the craft You're so good cutting it because knife. I would just rip it and make a disaster out of it. There we go. Well, you know what? We're going to cover the edges anyway, Julie. So you'd still be good. Oh, Let's good. Go and you are cutting one. on a mat so you don't cut our table. Exactly. Go through all the way. And you can always tell when you've gone all the way through. It's going to come apart right Perfect. Like that. Okay. There we go. Now, we'll take one piece of foam board. And first of all, we're going to do the inside cover. Now, I've already done that with this one here. And I'm going to let you actually take okay. this out of Thank the way you. for me, if you don't mind. And so this is going to be the inside. Just make sure that you lay the back cover next to it so you're putting them on the same side. Right. Does that make sense? Yes, it does. Yeah, I've made that mistake a and the words and are upside back. down okay. and it doesn't work. Right. Yes. Now then, well, this is going to be the cover on the outside. Now I am going to use an extra strength glue stick and it's important that it's extra strength and I'm using a glue stick because I'm going to go up and down, cover this piece of foam board entirely. Glue sticks are such an easy way to cover well, a lot you know of what? surface quickly. The thing is, that the, the thing that I really like about this is look how smooth it is. Mm -hmm. So there we go. And I think that's good for us for right now. Now I'm going to align the edge of the paper. Let me make sure where my inside edge is going to be. I'm going to align the paper. So I'm going to turn it around. I'm so glad I checked. What I is know. it? Check twice, cut once, or check yes. twice and glue Measure once. Measure twice, check once. There's yes. something like that. Okay. And I'm only going to press that down nice and firmly. Now I'm going to turn it over. There we go. And again, I'm going to press firmly. Mm -hmm. Now before I put glue on here, I'm actually going to bend it up so and to get a the nice crease. crease. And I'm going to turn it like this, and I'm actually going to fold it so I get a really, really nice mm -hmm. crease. And we'll fold that all the way over. Now then, I'm going to use a different kind of glue here because what I want is a very, very fine point because I'm going to put this glue along the that open edge. edge right here. I see. There we go. And it goes on just like a pen or something with yes, that little it detail does. tip. And it's going to soak mm -hmm. right in. And then I can use the uh, stick again, or I can actually use the other end of this. Oh. Why not? And just spread the glue all over. Spread it nice and evenly. Okay. And we'll put the cap on so it doesn't I can run take that out. from you. Thank you. And here's the cap jewel. I've okay. already got Thank it all you. over my hand, <laughs> but that's all right. Now then. We're crafty, right? So, and then again, I'm going to push down so that I get a nice, a nice even, clean, clean beautiful seal. edge. Okay, Nicely so there done. we've got our front cover, mm -hmm. but I also want to reinforce 
the binding part, okay. okay, because I want to cover it, I want to make it look nice. And so I'm going to use a strip of cardstock. Mm -hmm. And before I start to glue this, right. again, I'm going to fold it, make mm -hmm. sure it's lined up. And create and that crease once create again. That crease it's going to just make all the time. paper wrap around so exactly. much more easily. Now, as you can see, on this paper, mm -hmm. I do have a title, so I would cut a strip right. off before I actually glued it down, but that's going to make the cover look really nice and okay. clean. Cool. So if you'd like to take I will, that, but you I know. have one that is already finished. Okay. And here is where we're going to put the holes. Right. But you know what? Before I do that, mm -hmm. we're going to make our inside pages. Okay. And I went to the store and I got these page protectors. Just and regular I thought old they page would protectors. Fit. But you know what? When mm -hmm. I put them here, they're going to hang out the ends. So guess what we're going to do? We're going to cut off this little white strip right here. Okay. And very carefully, I want to make sure that I cut on the outside of that seam line. Right, because you don't want the page protector to fall apart. You just want to take off that tiny little extra bit of space. Right, exactly. Holding the ruler. You know, I, use, I have a, a, a rotary trimmer here that I use a mm -hmm. lot, but I just love the metal ruler and the craft knife. It really does make it stick. Now, I want to reinforce this because obviously this ed edge is going to have holes in it mm -hmm. too. So we're using a double stick tape. Okay, easy enough. Easy enough. And I probably would add another little piece okay. here, but we'll take Take this off, and then remember when I said I cut a little mm -hmm. strip off the um, piece of brown cardstock? Yes. I saved it, of course, and that is what we're going to put along this double stick. And that's tape. how you'll punch the holes in it, which I know you told me that this template here yes. was so that you could easily punch the holes in the well, cover. What you do. You just save this piece, and this is going to tell you exactly where the holes are going to be. I put the paper on top of here mm -hmm. with a rubber band, okay, mm -hmm. and then it's marked. And it's really important that you have a template because you want the front of the journal to match with the back of the journal. And you also want the holes to match with this strip here. So right. you'd use the same template. And of course you use a special hole punch that would go through all those layers. Yes, you and do. You do need something that's a little bit thicker than normal. This has been awesome. Thank you, Julie. You're very welcome. And we'll be right back. Well, Julie and I are going to share a project today with you that uses a lot of imagination and just one little dot. Can you believe that all the different techniques on this scrapbook page here, and there are actually eight different techniques, it was all created with one single dot. I love that. Obviously, multiples of them. <laughs> okay, well let's get, we're going to start with the diamond uh, border. Now, I actually glued some diamond shapes down mm -hmm. on the side of the paper first, and then between each point, there's a little foam square. And I'm going to take the top of the foam square like this, just very, very easily. And that's just going to reveal the it adhesive underneath. It's going to reveal the adhesive underneath, right. And then we will take one of these gold dots and just pop it right on top. And in no time at all, you've got a gorgeous, glamorous border, right? And we'll just keep going, and then that's just so easy and so beautiful. Well, I have made all sorts of little buttons here, and you can see all I do is take my dot, punch some holes in it, put some baker's twine through it, and you get all the little buttons that are here. You can also use ribbon, or, you know, if you don't feel like doing that, just use a pen and yes. make it fake. Uh -huh. Just really neat, neat. Now, we've also got some really pretty flowers on here. I naturally start, started with a punched flower shape. And then we would just add one dot upside down to the center. It now I've all already got the little, um, the little step outs right here. And so I'm going to build around the center by just putting more dots just upside down. And because just the dots have the that raised around. edge and they're curved, you can slip the extra little petals as they come just in right, right under underneath the lip. that lip. And here we've started building it. And then to finish it off, we would add one more dot upside down using one of the ad little adhesive squares. Very cool, and I see that you've curled the petals too to give it some I dimension. Know. aren't they so pretty? Now I've got one here, which is, these almost look like they're word brads or something, but all that I've done is take a little stamp, just a letter stamp, ink it up, no problem. I did a messy job inking, but you'll <laughs> forgive me. That's all right. Then I'm gonna press it down right onto my dot, and I'm building the word friends, and you can see bingo bango without any problem. And those letters are the it. perfect size too. And yeah. I love okay, now then, on the next technique, we're actually going to glitter some dots because we all like 
bling. Mm -hmm. Now this is just a glitter glue. So we've put the dots on first on our with our um, shape. Oh, that's a good tip to with put the them adhesive, out first yes. and then glitter them and afterwards. And then glitter them afterwards because then they're not going to move around on us. And you just keep going around until they're all done and then we will just set those aside to dry. Perfect. How and you fun know is that? the border on the page was created. All you need is some little white dots then you take paint, you take ink, you take pens, whatever your favorite medium is. And I'm just going to use some stamping ink here. And I'm just going to dab up and down and then boom 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 I rub it right over, right over the, the top, top. and yeah, start Easy with a fun. light touch and you can always add it's color because we can take it off. Pad. And again, lots of different colors to use, but I like that because it's a nice shabby chic look. <laughs> now the next one is lots of different colors, but how do we turn a plain color into an enameled color? They, you know, they look like brads. Oh, no, they look so, so good. So we're just going to put a glazing medium right on the top here. And Bob's your uncle, we have an enameled Brad. Because it's going to turn it from matte to exactly. shiny. Exactly. And also is going is self-leveling mm -hmm. and so it's going to dome on top of the dome and Very you get a cool. really cool look. Well for the last technique on the page, the gorgeous roses that are down at the corner and what we're going to use is that we're going to use the same wet adhesive and as you can see I start with a single little petal. Uh -huh. And what I'm going to do is I take one of these flat ones that's right here, take a skewer, wrap it around the skewer which helps me just get that nice uh -huh. dimension that I want. And then I would just place this into some wet adhesive, right? And as you can see, soon enough you have two. You add two more to make four. And I just would keep building the flower around and around this little punch circle. And of course you could start with a punch circle of any size any to build a flower yeah, you could build size. a really big one. You could make a peony instead of a rose. <laughs> How fun. And by the end you have this gorgeous big flower, which I think is fantastic. But shall we take a, one more look yes. at the page and we can see all those techniques and how they work together. It's amazing to me in one layout, eight techniques, and they all work together seamlessly. Because it's all one single dot. Exactly. That's how it and of course, it's so versatile because if you look at some of the other projects that we have out here, you can see how you can mix and match these techniques so that if you only want to use one or two, it's really a choose your own adventure kind of thing. You just need imagination and, you know, whatever else is around in your craft room to mix it up and make something lovely from just a little dot. It's beautiful. This has been awesome as always, and we will be right back. Well, I'm back with Stacy Karen, and she has a great project, which I have to admit, Stacy, I thought it was fabric when I first saw it. It does look like But it's fabric. embossed paper. It is embossed paper, and we actually decided to do this because the beautiful little bonnet that oh. Carissa has on is so pretty, and we wanted to replicate that feel in the actual layout itself. And I'd say you've done it. Thank you. We've actually embossed paper, and we've used an embossing folder. This embossing folder has two sides, so it has two different patterns that you can choose from. Wow. We've used both patterns in the layout, so we're going to just take the pre-cut, die-cut squares that I've used here, okay. and we're just going to line them up on the folder, and then run them through the die-cutting machine for the embossing effect. So you could just place them anywhere in Anywhere, there. just like that. And then just close the folder, mm -hmm. and put the embossing mat on top. This is a special embossing mat that's made for the folders. Okay. And then just run it through the die-cutting machine. Cool. And I know that you also have some large size embossing yeah, folders because I can see one here that's huge. Yeah, right here. Which is really awesome for a photo mat yes. or for anything, for the entire front of a card yes. or something like that. Mm -hmm. Very cool idea. So one pass through the die cutting machine and you have your squares embossed. Oh, We're it's We're going to take this a step further. We are actually going to do a faux letterpress technique. And so that just means you take some ink and you just run the ink lightly over your embossed areas. Does it need to be any kind of special ink no, or anything any kind that of you ink like? that you like? You just make a gentle rub. I see. You're just brushing it over there, just and you have that piece of scrap paper down just to protect your yeah, surface. Just to protect. It. And then you just go ahead and you. Such a cool tone on tone, and going. I'll put some of these out here. It's a very quick and easy way to fill this whole background. Yeah. And the larger folder is actually what we used to do the larger piece of cardstock mm -hmm. in the center of the layout. And now if you wanted to reverse it, is there anything special you have to do to get the design on the other no, side? No, you simply just put the cardstock in this way mm -hmm. 
or you put the cardstock on the opposite side and fold it the opposite way. That is very, so, two very options. cool. And I know here that you have done some hidden journaling. Yes, hidden. And I think that hidden journaling is great because oftentimes people get nervous or scared sure. that the journaling is going to be too busy on the page. Or you might page. have a private message for somebody that I you don't know. want everybody thumbing through your book and looking at. I so. know, but isn't the journaling the reason that we scrapbook after all? It is all? the reason that we scrapbook. So cute. We also have used this technique with metal to do jewelry. I so love over it. here you can see where we've made a bracelet. That bracelet is wonderful. It and really you said that fun. that was not, it's metal foil? Yes, it's actually metal foil mm -hmm. and it's actually on like a harder surface, like heavier chipboard. Okay. And then you just go to town. So and you can run metal foil through the machine no problem at absolutely. all. Absolutely. And you can see the card right over there. We've done that technique. As that well as tone cool. on tone effects. That is very, very cool. And I think the thing about the tone on tone is that it has a sort of wedding ish feel to it me. It does. You know? It's There's very elegant very, and upscale. Exactly. It's exactly. totally fun like and easy. That. One pass through the machine. I know. This is amazing to me how much you can do with this stuff. One little die cut. Yeah, That's know. amazing. Thanks. Thanks so much, and we'll be right back. We finish up today with another journal that we have to share from Cindy Bisson, one of our viewers. And this is a little bit different, and I absolutely love this. This is a book of wisdom. And we're going to open it up, and inside, it's there's a, book a at all. letter. It's a box. It's a box, exactly. And what it is, is a letter, and it's all about advice to her boys. So, the, hence the words of wisdom. And she has all these little pages in here. And there's the ribbon, so you can actually pull them out easily. But she's got photographs on tags. She's got little pockets. And look how they open up or they swivel. And it's all these words of advice. This is just such a wonderful idea. This is a real labor of love. And you know, this book is a great example of the fact that a journal can be many things, and individual pieces are a very, valid way of journaling. Very. And thanks for joining us again. Make sure and visit our Facebook page and website to let us know about what you're working on because we'd love to see your projects. And stop by next week as we explore some techniques with transparent or translucent looks. Visit ScrapbookSoupTV.com for a mix of designers, materials, and projects. All of the patterns and pages on this Series 200, all in one Scrapbook Soup. This is Show 211. Mix it all up with more Scrapbook Soup. A DVD set of all 13 episodes of Scrapbook Soup Series 200 is available for $39.99 plus shipping and handling. Visit ScrapbookSoupTV.com to order a mix of designers, materials, and projects all in one Scrapbook Soup. Today's Scrapbook Soup has been brought to you in part by Spellbinders, dye templates for cutting, embossing, and stenciling. Beautiful details, inspiring creativity. Spellbinderspaperarts.com Stamp, sprinkle, tap, heat, wow. Wowembossingpowder.co.uk Sakura Color Products of America. Sakuraofamerica.com